Let us now invite our next speaker, Comrade Chan Chun Singh. Comrade Chun Singh is currently helping out at Bona Vista. He will be sharing a tale of two small states. Comrade Chun Singh, please. Good morning, still, fellow comrades. Uh, since I stand between you and the sec gen, I thought maybe my role is to warm you up before the sec gen comes on stage. Okay, so why don't we play a game since all the, you have heard all the speeches. Okay, the question is, let's check how confident we are of our country's future. And we can all vote, and you can vote many times, unlike the GE. Okay, let's start. Who thinks that Singapore will be around for five more years? Kijiu, hands up. Ah, okay. Oh, not bad. Okay, okay. Not bad, huh? Okay, 10. Oh, still not bad. 25. Whoa, steady. 50. Whoa. 100. Oh, this one not so steady, really. Not so steady, not so steady. Okay. 150. Whoa. Whoa, baby pie. 200. Whoa. Hey, you're steady, you're steady. By my mental calculation, uh, I think the average is about at least 100. Uh. So not bad. 100. Quite amazing. 100 plus, we are already 45, means at least 145. Uh. I checked history. In the last 700 years of Southeast Asia history, very few small states, the size of Singapore, don't say the big one like Sri Vijaya, Majapahit, uh, okay, have survived more than 100 years. So, we all believe we all can at least go 150. But actually, in the history, very few. Two came to mind after I searched the internet, tried to do my research. One was Lanfang Republic. The other one was the Sultanate of Denak. Lanfang Republic was a small trading state in West Kalimantan that existed somewhere between 1774 to about 1880s. It was run by a mix of indigenous people from Kalimantan, plus some Bugis, some Javanese, and some famous descendants from southern China. They paid tributes to the Qing dynasty of China for protection, but they were conquered by the Dutch. Today, if we visit West Kalimantan, places like Pontianak and Singkawang, there's still a group of people down there that the locals call Hitachi. Why Hitachi? Hitachi is in the no, Japanese brand Hitachi. Because it stands for Hitam Tetapit China. Black, but with black skin, but speak Mandarin. They all have dark skin, but speak the southern Chinese dialect. Maybe they are the descendants of the Lanfang Republic that was existed two centuries ago. The second small state was the Sultanate of Denak that existed somewhere between 1475 to 1548, 73 years. At the height of its existence, it dominated the trade of northern Java. Then after three generations of rulers, two princes fought for power, killed themselves, and the sultanate self-destructed. He Pang Xiang Zhen, Yi Wong De Li. Many of us probably have never heard of these two small states because they have joined the other small states in the dustbin of history. Four things intrigue me from the story of these small states. First, why did they forget to defend themselves? Why did Lanfang Republic choose to why did Lanfang Republic choose to believe that they can buy insurance by paying tributes to Qing to a declining Qing dynasty of China? Our response to all those calling us to buy insurance is this: Don't buy the wrong insurance. My Liao Lui, my Boi Sala insurance. Second, why, second, why did Lanfang Republic and the Nak forget that they must earn a living by being relevant to the world? When Lanfang and the Nak started, they were the best in the region for what they did, trading and natural resources mining. But when, but when other competitors came by, started catching up and competing with them, why did they not upgrade? Or to use Minister Lim Sui Se's word, why did they not become cheaper, better, faster? <laughs> they forgot. 
Yesterday's success is no guarantee for tomorrow's survival. Third, why did Lanfang Republic and the Danak Sultanate not throw up forward-looking leaders and strong leadership teams? Was it because they keep looking inside, fighting inside, and forget that the real competition was from outside? Why were the two, the Mark princes, so seized by Team A versus Team B, Matam like the s -lick, when they needed most to work together to send a team to the World Cup to fight off the other kingdoms? Was it because the good people there think they already have good enough leadership and need not come forward to serve? Big countries like a super tanker need reasonable leadership teams to stay afloat. Small countries like a yacht need exceptional leaderships to watch the waves and catch the wind to just stay afloat. We are a small country. Finally, why did Lanfang Republic and the Sultanate of Danak not throw up committed people to fight? Was it because over time, they have degenerated into different groups fighting amongst themselves only for their sectoral interests? Was it because the society was broken when those who have and those who can did not care enough for those who have not or cannot? Was it that the leaders and the people no longer share the same values anymore? Maybe it was all this and more. Beyond the big, big policies, we must reach out to help those in need, one at a time. Just like the child who wanted to save the starfishes stranded on the beach, throwing a starfish back to the sea, one at a time. Even if the char could not save all the starfishes, every starfish thrown back to the sea was one more starfish safe. When we reach out to help others, we are also helping ourselves, finding meaning, building commitment, and strengthening our community. Regardless of where we come from, we must all aim towards a common goal with a set of common perspectives and values. The goal must simply be for Singapore to survive and to grow. The shared perspective and values must include what our forefathers have practiced, that we put the interests of our country and our people before our own, always. That we remain disciplined and stay vigilant to the forces affecting our environment and survival, always that we remain incorruptible, stay meritocratic, and stay frugal, always. That we seek to define the largest common space for all, while balancing the space for different aspirations and perspectives. We must never forget to work hard, to bond with our people, listen to the aspirations, share the frustrations, and manage our challenges together. Going forward, the journey to overcome together is as important as the final goal to overcome. I am not pessimistic. I am not fatalistic. With gumption and creativity, we will stay together, stay alert, stay alive, and overcome the odds of history. 100 years, here we come, united we stand. Thank you.